Hi, Jessica here. Welcome back to My Transgender Nation. Today, we are going to do an interview with a very special guest, Jessica Lynn. <clears throat> From her website, Jessica Lynn is a world-renowned transgender advocate, educator, and activist. Her experiences as a transgender woman and parent led her to dedicate her life to spreading awareness and acceptance for gender non-conforming communities around the world. Jessica is internationally considered one of the foremost transgender speakers due to her dynamic, refreshing, honest speaking style, unique sense of humor and signature ask me anything question and answer sessions. Over the last several years, Jessica has traveled over a million miles, visiting 28 different countries, presenting over a thousand times, helping to educate the general public about transgender community, and she isn't finished yet. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to it. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to My Transgender Nation. And today we are so excited to welcome Jessica Lynn to our channel. Jessica Lynn is a global ambassador for the Kinsey Institute and an advocate um, for the transgender community. She speaks all over the world on behalf of the transgender community to raise awareness and educate. And um, Jessica, welcome today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. What an yes, awesome thank you, you guys today. Yeah. This is great. I'm very excited to have you here today. And so am I. I'm excited to chat with you guys. Yeah. All right. Terrific. So Jessica Lynn, talk to us a little bit about how you became an advocate and an educator for the transgender community. Mm, do we have three hours? <laughs> um, originally, when I transitioned, I transitioned at 45 years old and I had the dream, like most transgender people, I think, in my, my around my age, you know, I'm 57 years old now. But uh, my dream back then was I wanted to transition, live the female life and never, never know. Nobody would ever know that I was, quote, Transgen transgender that I transitioned, you know, I wanted to live the stealth life. Mm -hmm. But then a few incidents happened, you know, um, uh, one with a guy that I started dating, I wasn't up front with him. And he had a really difficult time. And it was very, very, it put me in a position, wow, like, you know what, I could have gotten beat up or killed because I started dating a guy. And I didn't disclose to him that I was transgender. And it kind of, that was one of the things that hmm, maybe I should start doing this. And and where, when I transitioned in California, I let nobody know. I mean, it was just kind of private and it was just that kind of stuff. But then what happened is I am also a father of three boys. I had full legal physical custody. And originally when I started my transition, I had the full support of my children's mother. I mean, she was very, very supportive. We made an arrangement. I let her take the kids to Texas while I I stayed behind in California, finish off some work and start my transition. Well, she ended up stabbing me in the back, taking me to court in the state of Texas. And she ended up filing a lawsuit to take away my parental rights to my youngest child, which was then at that time, 12 years old. A judge ordered me to go to jail to have a psychiatric evaluation done by his evaluator. And their right wing evaluator came back and said I was actually the better parent and the judge would not allow it in the courtroom. And a judge in Texas in 2013 stripped me of all of my parental rights to my youngest child. Later that year, he took my name off my child's birth certificate for being transgender. And it turns out this is one of the only and first time in U.S. history that this has happened. And I said, you know what? My case went to the Department of Justice. And they came back and said, there's not much you can do about it, but what you can do is use your stories to help change the world. And I started doing that and I started speaking about it. I started speaking at a community college in California called Allen Hancock College. I took a human sexuality class and I spoke for about 15, 20 minutes and I was scared to death. And then now I travel the world right now. I live in England right now. Today I'm in the it's Seattle and the University of Washington. Tomorrow I'll speak to 2,000 human sexuality students. I fly back on Tuesday. I have a talk on Thursday. I do this all over the planet. The next generation, the students that we speak to, the younger generation, these are the ones that are going to make the difference. If these are the ones that are going to be the parents, they're going to be the teachers, they're going to be the doctors, they're going to be the politicians. And if we can open up their minds, then the world in the future is going to be a better, better place. Mm -hmm. so. That's an amazing story. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us.
Um, so now you speak all over the world and how did you get involved with the Kinsey Institute? Uh, about six, seven years ago, five, six years ago, um, a professor at IU, Indiana University, him and I started talking and he asked me to come to speak at the at Indiana University. Kinsey Institute is under the, um, at the time they weren't, but they're on the campus at Indiana University. And I came and it was like one of my biggest, biggest honors in the world. I'm speaking at Indiana University. The guy that brought me in is some, he's re related with the Kinsey Institute. I came in, He we went for a walk. We walked over the Kinsey Institute and I was just like, oh my God, I'm in the Kinsey Institute. You know what I mean? This is the most <laughs> prestigious human sexuality research institute on planet earth. And then I gave another talk and while I was there, that very talk of the auditorium, the director, Dr. Sue Carter and Nancy Otrowski, the second in charge, came walking in and they stood at the top and they came and they sat and listened to my presentation. After the presentation, they came up to me and said, we'd like to have lunch with you. And they started talking and they said that was very, very powerful. And I started speaking with the Kinsey Institute and they started asking me to do some talks around the country with them. We did some stuff in Florida, a lot in Miami. And... Um, and then after a few years, they came back and they said, you know, you're not an academic, you're not a PhD or anything, but we want you to be part of the Kinsey Institute. And we said, would you be our global ambassador to the Kinsey Institute? And so now we're inseparable. I mean, I just had an email back and forth with Justin Garcia. You go to my website at www.jessicalin.co.uk. And there's Dr. Justin Garcia on the very first page mm -hmm. of my website talking about my presentation. And, um, and it's just, it's such a partnership. They do so much education. And I really look at it as Alfred Kinsey is the father of the LGBT community because he really opened up the world more than anybody towards the LGBT community, you know, and it's just so... I rambled too much. I apologize. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, when we were doing research um, for this interview, I was amazed at how many talks you do all over the world and how you go to every country. Yeah. You're going to Poland, you're here in the United States, you're in the UK. Um, how is that life set? Like, how is that? I mean, I traveled for work, uh, you know, at a different time in my life and it was just exhausting for me. But do you like love like being in front of the, um, you know, in front of your audience and, and meeting the kids and I absolutely adore it. That's why I, I, in my home in England, I have a full studio. So if you watch a web, a live website of me is I have a big monitor behind me. I have cameras, I got lights and I got sound system but I'm speaking to a camera. I see faces on the screen, but that's, you know, that's not meeting the students. Yeah. When you walk into an auditorium, I went into, a, I think it was University of Fort Hare in South Africa. And I walk in and there's about five, 600 students sitting there. There's big, three big giant screens behind me and about five, 600 st students. And the professor goes, we have a transgender woman from America coming to give a presentation today. And five, 600 students started laughing about a transgender woman. By the end of the presentation, they would not stop asking questions. About 300 of them queued up to have pictures taken, to ask me one-on-one. -on -one. The letters that I got back saying, you changed my view. You opened my mind. I had no idea. And this is why we do what I do, why, why so many of us do what we do. We're actually making a difference. I spoke at Mississippi State about six years ago, six, yeah, roughly six years ago. And about a year ago, I got an Instagram message from somebody saying, um, I saw you speak at my campus, you know, five, six years ago. And, um, and I want you to know that my child came out as transgender to me about a year ago. That conversation that I had with you, that presentation saved my child's life. And to me, that is wow. why we do what we do. Just Friday, I got a Facebook message from somebody in the UK, from Sheffield. And they said, um, you see this face right here? They saw you speak in Sheffield a year ago, part of the training, whatever. You saved that kid's life. You know what I mean? So this is just constant everywhere. And it's not just me. You got Jessica. Everybody, we're all doing this. You know what I mean? So if we can multiply that. So when I can go to tomorrow, speak to 2,000 students here at the University of Washington on Thursday at the University of Suffolk, 
this is where we're going to make a difference. So that's where I truly, truly believe it. And I believe it is when we have these conversations, when I sit and talk to a student. So I have no problem sitting and having lunch and talking to a group of students. I love that. I yeah. absolutely love it. I don't, I don't look at myself as um, there's times that I go and people want pictures and that's just not who I am. I just want to sit down. I'm just a normal everyday person, you know, and that's what it is. So I ramble. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's amazing. That's a, it's an amazing story that you, yeah. you know, not only are changing the perception of the transgender community, but also saving lives and that's so important. And I know that's one thing that Jessica um, is also so passionate about to reach out to people if they need help, making sure that they're not alone. We always yeah. tell people to, you know, contact her. And and if if you need help, we'll help you find, you know, what you need. And, um, you know, just don't try to do this by yourself because it's impossible to do by yourself. Yeah. It's it's a, one of the most difficult things. Part of my workshop is that I do a lot with the NHS. A lot in the UK is um, I train a lot with the NHS. The NHS is the National Health Service, right, which is the mm -hmm. whole medical. So I do a lot with Rotherham, with Doncaster, with all these different organizations. And part of my presentation, it shows, you know, what somebody like me has to transition through with later in life. I transitioned at 45 years old. Things that we constantly have to hide. We have to hide our voice. We have to hide our facial shape. We have to hide our broader shoulders. We are bigger. We have bigger hands. We have bigger feet. These are things that we have to walk out of the store, out of the house every single day to try to quote blend in so that we don't get beat up, that we don't get ridiculed, that we don't get made fun of. What I want to be in a world, what my dream is to be in a world where so that person is transgender. So that person was born a female. So that person was born. Who gives a shit? Who cares? That's what makes this world beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at the diversity. Everybody has a unique story, different chain, different name, different challenge, different life. This is what makes us beautiful. And I don't know if I answered that question correct. Mm -hmm. I yeah. yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. You answered it with your answer. And that's that's right. the correct answer no that's matter right. what. So, you know, the ancients saw transgender people as somebody to, you know, as a higher up, not as something below and beyond, right? It's just modern religion and society that has twisted yeah. that around and made it just the opposite. So we mm -hmm. got to fix that. I, I totally, totally agree. And, you know, um, and without offending it, but really religion is the one, you know, when the, when the Native Americans were in America, here in the United States, yeah. Um, they were considered the hierarchy of the communities, you know, in Indonesia, different parts of the world, in, in, in India, you know, and it was when the British came in there. In South Africa, it's when the community, you know, when they brought their thing in there, they brought their religion, they said, okay, no more of this. Um, you know, when the Spaniards came to America here, um, Balboa came and would slaughter us for dog food. And this is what became of us. So you're absolutely right. So, we need to celebrate who we are. We don't need yeah. to hide the fact that my hands are a little bit bigger than mm -hmm. that girl down the street that my, you know, um, so it is. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I tend yeah. to go on a tangent once in a while and yeah, I have well, It's an appropriate <laughs> way to go though. <laughs> Tell us about um, your butterfly project because I know that's something that's near and dear to your heart. Well, to me, what Butterfly Project is, it was part of a program that we worked together. I used to have a manager. I don't, I don't have a manager right now. I've gone through different periods, different managers and stuff like that because I got so much involved with emails and it just, it gets chaotic. But we did a project called the Butterfly Project. And what the idea behind that was is, you know, the butterfly. When I was a young child, I was absolutely fascinated with butterflies. I used to collect caterpillars, the monarch caterpillar, uh, the, the thing at Pierce College. And I used to put them in a the thing and I used to feed them, feed them the milkweed. And I used to just sit there and watch the bat butterfly transfer, that caterpillar transfer into the butterfly. So the butterfly project is it's a meaning transformation for the transgender community. And this is what it is. And we all have a story. So part of the butterfly project is when we went to the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs, when we went to this university in Miami, it's not just one story. Jessica has a story. My friend Chanel has a story. My friend Peggy has a story. We all have different stories. And that's what the collegium of 
of stories and we need for uh, it's it's like an opportunity to get people to share their stories if that kind of makes sense and it's kind of big in india trying to put it together there in india but it's like a conundrum of stories and that's where the idea is from there does that kind of make sense to you so mm -hmm. is it a collection mm -hmm. of stories is that what yeah, you, mean? you know I'm, I'm working on a few different books but that's what the word conundrum means you know it's like i said it's just um, so when we did presentations, we could we titled them the Butterfly Project. Is we would bring other people in to go and share their story. So Jessica would come and spend 15, 20 minutes and share a bit about her story. And then my friend Peggy would come in there and share 15, 20 minutes of her story. And we tried to get this to go really, really to start doing this. You know, not a, not. A lot of people, when they start telling their stories and start presenting themselves, they're not comfortable. When I first started doing this, the first time I ever spoke, I only spoke for 15, 20 minutes. I looked at the ceiling and I was scared to death, you know. So what this is, is trying to push people in our community, share a little bit about themselves to break down this barrier. It's not everybody's responsibility. If Jessica does not want to go out there and to explain to her, her journey every time she's asked about it, every time she's she walks into a room that's her prerogative okay but what i want what i see one of the greatest ways of breaking down this issue is by sharing journeys um there's a statement that i use uh um it's hard to hate someone whose story you know so if we start doing that this is a way to normalize us if that makes sense to you not you know we're all normal we're all normal in our own way but just to make us just part of the society, to break down those scare tactics because mm -hmm. people don't know how to how to approach somebody in our community. Mm -hmm. So that's what that was. And we started doing that. And there was a few different people that took that butterfly project, went into their campuses and brought people in. And I think that was the idea behind it. And I think it's just I think it's a really good idea for more and more people because I'm only one story. I'm only one story. I would love, I had, I used to have a spot on my website where people could share their information to share their journeys because I'm only one person. I can't be all over the planet. A lot of people like to hear my story because it's unique. I have a really good PowerPoint. My PowerPoint presentation has 380 slides. It has video in there, the whole nine yards. I mean, it's not just a PowerPoint presentation. I was just in Slovenia. And there was a professor from U Ukraine there in the audience. And she goes, your, your, your presentation is an event. It's more of a, it's more of a really wow. You know, I'm not asking everybody to do that. This is what I've done for a living, you know? Um, but, and I'm just using Jessica for instance, but Jessica go out there and she goes to the university of Connecticut. And when she's first time she's speaking, now she may have a difficult time. So she brings three other transgender people in there, a transgender man, somebody that's gender non-conforming, gender fluid, and then three, four, five people stand in front of the classroom and each share, share their story for 10, 15, 20 minutes. And I think it's one of the greatest ways to get more people in our community sharing a little bit about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. It does. Yep. Yeah, that's one of the things that when we started uh, My Transgender Nation in our YouTube channel, um, that was one of the things that we were um, really passionate about, that Jessica would share her story and that other people would like to, you know, we're going to have a, um, we almost call them seasons or series. And one of our, our future series is going to be, um, you know, other people who want to share their story on yeah. our channel. Yeah. And I think it's so important. People always like to know, um, you know, I, I work a lot with entrepreneurs and I work a lot with, um, you know, kind of telling people stories and finding out what they're all about, you know, so I can understand their business and how they got here. And, yeah. um, you know, similar to your project, you know, it's, it's so interesting. Everyone has a, a different story and a different reason why yeah. they did yeah. what they did. Right. And, and how they kind of fold everything in and and then you all kind of end up at the same place um yeah. but you know how you got how you get there is the interesting part so yeah. I, I love that project yeah, yeah. And, and and so th this is just the one aspect of it um you know i talk a lot about a lot of my workshop and a lot of my training going from that same story is um where we do a lot on terminology 
people don't understand. They make fun of a lot of the older transgender community. Um, and there's a lot of people that don't like all the different terminology under that transgender umbrella, right? Mm -hmm. But what does this fit in? What does this fit in? And what I boil it back down to is I'm not a big fan of all this different terminology of everybody all over the world. How about one term, human? OK, mm -hmm. there's more similarity between each and every single one of us on this planet than there is the differences, because if you technically look at there's 7.8 billion people on planet Earth and that's 7.8 billion different labels, because we all have a unique perspective, a unique life, a unique journey, a unique truth. And this is what makes us who we are. And we need to celebrate that. It does. It does. Amen. You know, so my hair is in my face all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I do. I just it is. Um, we tell us what kind of um, you know what kind of books, what kind of literature can people read to start their journey or to get support? And what are your favorite things that you like to read, or what do you suggest to people who come and ask you questions? There, there, Jenny Boylan has a book, and I can't remember the top of the topic of the book. Um, I mean, the name of the book right now. Jenny Boylan has several different books out there that she's done. Phenomenal, phenomenal. A good book. I highly recommend it. Is Susan Stryker's Transgender History. And um, and then there's another one called Trans Like Me. And I think um, Trans Like Me is the name of the book. I can't remember the title, the name, the author right now. Um, but these are really a couple really, really good books. I tend I have a lot of my if you go if you go in my house, in my living room, it's just I have this bookcase and it's all it is, is sex, 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 sex. <laughs> I work at the Institute. What are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? The history of sex. And I read a lot of that kind of stuff because the history of sex and gender, gender and sexuality is, um, it is very fluid back in the, you know, um, two, 3000 years ago, uh, you know, being gay wasn't wrong. It was just part of the normal everyday life. And so was being transgender. And mm -hmm. like, like Jessica said, it was really religion that made it. Um, first, it was the Hebrew religion back, um, uh, you know, a certain many of thousands of years ago that said, no, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, so I read a lot of that kind of stuff. And when, because this is what I do for a living, I tend to pull off and I re I just finished a book called um, the world's smallest man and it's just and it's different but it's just what I read <laughs> you know and it's nothing to do with gender or sexuality it's just it's just a, it was just a fascinating read I just finished yeah. another one on the airplane yesterday and I can't remember um, I can't remember what it was called but <laughs> I read more d different type of stuff I yeah. mean you know but like I said when it comes to human sexuality when it comes to um, when it comes to that type of information, um, those are two books that I highly, highly recommend. They're some of them my favorite reading. There's a lot, a lot of gender and sexuality books out there um, that uh, is just quite interesting. Um, you know, so what, but that's those are two that I highly recommend. Okay, great. Because we always look for resources for the people who follow my transgender nation, and yeah. we always try to, you know, put out some information and help, tips, guides, and so that's very, very helpful for our I will, readers. Part of what I do a few years ago, I was telling you this pre, pre, pre when we were hopped on about three, four, five years ago, about five years ago, I'm sorry. Um, I spoke at the University of Oxford. It was my first trip ever. And what happened was a, um, a young lady approached me afterwards and she emailed me. She says, can I meet with you? And she said, um, I want to put this research project together to do with transgender healthcare. Well, it was pushed and it was pushed and back and forth. She got funded. It was roughly a, quite a big chunk of money. That study, which is where my good friend, Dr. Sam Martin comes from, that study is being released in about two weeks. There will be a link on my website. Okay. And the, the material out of that is going to really, really hopefully um, change the world. It's uh, it's an academic report, um, but it's phenomenal, phenomenal, and it's been a three-year research project that a few a few researchers. I'm an advisor on the project, so I'm a, again I am biased, but it's coming from Oxford and it's coming mm -hmm. from um, National Institute of Re um, of Health Research, and it's really fantastic. So that'll be some really good information. Okay, too. and your and, and your website again is 
Um, JessicaLynn.co.uk. Okay. So in a few weeks, we yeah. will, uh, uh, so uh, probably by March. No, well, no, it's, it's, I think it's been about two or three weeks. We have a, we okay. have a um, release party. Okay. Remember in a couple of weeks, I just, I get confused with dates. Okay. I don't even That's know okay. what it is right now. <laughs> well, you don't you probably even know, don't know what time zone you're in right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like I was just talking to Jessica. I was on Harvard stage once. I was true story. I was at Harvard once and, and, I'm, and I was so confused. And I said to the young lady in the front row is, uh, what school am I at? <laughs> you know, you just get really, really confused. It yeah. just becomes sometimes it, um, I, you know, I mean, the kind of stuff that I do, I was, I spoke at UCLA. Then the next morning I got an early flight and I flew a 16 hour flight to Dubai. I sat in the airport for eight hours, oh. another eight hours to Johannesburg, South Africa, sat in the airport there for seven hours, flew to East London, got to my hotel about 10 o'clock, woke up and I did like 12 hours of training the next day. Oh, and, um, uh, and I don't sleep on an airplane. Okay. I uh, just can't, I, I cannot do it. And um, that's the kind of insanity it is. So you can understand why I, half the time I have no oh. idea where the hell. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 a lot. that's a lot. Wow. That's a lot for a year, never mind, just a little segment, and then you're off again somewhere else. My record so far is um, five talks in five countries in five days. Oh, Ooh. my God. Monday, I think it was at the University of Austria. Tuesday, it was in um, Hungary. Wednesday, I was in Croatia. Thursday, I think I was in Germany. And Friday, I was in Finland. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stupidity, huh? Yeah. Now, do you speak a lot of languages or do you do everything in English? Everything's in English. Yeah. There's in most students worldwide speak English. It, it is the business language of business. Mm -hmm. Japan um, was difficult because not everybody there spoke English and they had to have a translator, which kind of is very. It kind doesn't of, all translate. Well, it, 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 when you're on a flow of saying something, so you say something, have you ever done a presentation where they translate? It kind of screws you up. You know, when you have yeah. people doing sign that most, most times I do a presentation, there'll be a, somebody in the front signing and that I don't, because they'll switch from one to two because they get really tired, you know, mm -hmm. and then you should see when I do the dirty jokes and no, I'm just kidding with the sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, but the thing is, is but when you're doing different languages, it can be a little confusing. I was in Cyprus once and they did they did a translation and it really kind of just kind of slows down the process, you know, yeah. and yeah. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah. You know? And um, have you ever been to Cyprus? No, I have not. It's a beautiful little island. I mean, it's actually really, really pretty. Going back there again, I think in March or April. So it's a really fun country. Well, it's got to be warmer than here because right now it's freezing. <laughs> so Cyprus <laughs> is looking great. <laughs> it's really, you know, um, it's really close because I do some stuff in Israel and, and it, you know, it's just a quick hop and skip across the, from the island to the, it's, it's in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's quite beautiful, but there's a lot of history. And that's one of my things that I absolutely love. So where I go, I love to visit the historic spots, you know, the museums. I love to go to the old cathedrals, the old places where there's something called where Lazarus, where he, when mm -hmm. he came to Israel, you know, mm -hmm. I've spoken in Israel a number of times. And when you go to Jerusalem, it's just, it's fascinating. I'm not religious, but yeah. to me, it's absolutely fascinating. It really, really is, you know. And that what an opportunity that is for you too to oh be able God, to speak you know? about the thing that you're passionate about and travel yeah. and learn and, yeah. and meet all these really great people. It was fascinating. One time I, I spoke in Rome and I can't remember where, but I spoke in Rome and one of the students there was from Dartmouth. He was a, a student from Dartmouth doing a, doing something. So the next day him and his girlfriend met me in the morning and he was a, um, one of his majors was history. Mm -hmm gave me a tour of Rome when he knew all the history and oh my God, the history there is just unbelievable. It's just, he, he, he could just spend so much time there just looking at the history. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, I've been to Rome twice and I, uh, that's one of my favorite yeah. places to go. Cause it's just, it's endless. 
Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's just endless, you know, and they keep uncovering in the, with the yeah. ruins, they just keep uncovering more and more and more. Yeah. 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 You, you find that in England a lot is um, next week on, I fly out of here on Tuesday. I'll get to, I'll get to London on Wednesday. And then I'm going to go up to a place called Norwich. And, um, and if you ever watch the movie, it's called the dig. And mm -hmm. it's, um, and it's about up in Suffolk, um, where they, it's the world, it's England's biggest archeological find. And they found a ship um, laden with jewels and treasure. And it's one of the greatest things that was a Vi Victoria, um, a Viking ship where they dragged mm -hmm. it and, and they buried, it was a burial chamber for a king. And it's, um, they, they made a movie called The Dig about it, but I'm gonna go see that on, on whether it's Wednesday or Thursday, mm -hmm. because I love that stuff. You know, I'm gonna go yeah. a little bit early and to go explore it. I just find that absolutely phenomenal, that kind of history. I love yeah. it, you know? Thanks. And so it is, it is one of the perks for yeah. wherever I go. For what you do. Yeah. Um, Jessica Riley, yes. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, um, <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the long-term um, mission of my transgender nation. And then maybe Jessica Lynn, you could maybe give Jessica some advice about how, you know, what would be the best way to get there? Sure. So um, basically we've started my transgender nation um, initially as building a resource, uh, you know, information, uh, a, a place where we can share uh, um, places to, you know, to get help, um, to um, build videos and uh, uh, a, a collection of, of stories so that try and help people. That's what we're starting with. The long-term plan for my transgender nation as a nonprofit is to basically help service the underserved within our community. There are, there are plenty that need help um, because they're getting kicked out of their homes. They don't, ha they don't have clothing. They don't have housing. The, they, they want to transition and they don't have the means by which to do it. So we hope to build this to a place where the, the world is funding us so we can fund them and help them move forward as their real selves. Yeah. It's, that's so there's such an awesome awesome goal and I'm you know I just I'm, I'm thrilled for you I'm really and the and the community are you planning on doing this across the country or mainly specifically in Connecticut um basically we 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 are we are working with across the country so you know, I'm located in Connecticut uh but you know as as time goes on and as we build this we hope to basically serve everybody we can help so that's um, so we're not gonna be we're not gonna be you know just down to a geographic area at all. Congratulations. And that's so Thanks. phenomenal. And, and, and this is um, what I may have started to say a little bit earlier. This is one of the things that you may not be a speaker. You may not be able to do this, but there's so many different aspects that somebody in our community, I'm not saying you, Jessica, are not a speaker, yeah. but I'm just saying anybody. And they say, well, how can I help? You can help raise money. You can help talk to this person. You can sell this. You can, um, some people are good at writing. Some people are phenomenal at writing and writing blogs, at writing information or writing things. I'm sharing stuff on the internet, reaching out, writing letters to your community leaders, writing letters to this. There are so many different aspects of being an advocate and um and getting more allyship helping to um people understand you know so uh, that's phenomenal that's so 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 good so congratulations in any which way i can help i you know i have a website it's not got a huge following i work my own stuff it's mainly academic is where really really where people do it you know yes. I'm not the greatest on social media you know really the academics look at my website and um you know uh but anything that I can do to help promote you, push you, please. Thank you. Feel Greatly free. appreciate that. You know what I mean? We're just getting started with this and um, we're, we're I'm kind of surprised how quickly um, it's been taking hold. Yeah. And it's being warmly received, which is fabulous. Um, I think the way we've done our videos is rather different from everything we've seen out there. There's a lot of Kardashian like videos out there or it's everybody's going me, 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 look how pretty I am. And we're not about that. You yeah. know, we're about telling a story, trying to educate for those who are trying to transition, those who are trying to understand the transgender community. 
Uh, so, um, and apparently it struck a nerve and it's doing well. So we, we can't wait to see where it goes from here. Good for you. Good, good, good for you. And the one is the one of the um, one of the greatest piece of advice that I have for transgender people is um, there's a couple, but one of the things is um, for the general community for the world is there's no right way to transition and there's no wrong way. There is one way and that is your way. And that is the biggest critical thing is if somebody doesn't want to have their surgery, that's okay. Don't let, if somebody only wants to dress three times a week or five times a week or seven times a week, that's their choice. Please, there's no, no right way to live your life. There's no wrong way to live your life. You have to live the life that you, you know, you, you, you choose. And to me, that's the one of the greatest things that there is about it. One of the things is kind of like, like I was saying is, I'm the president of a nonprofit based in California. I'm called Your True Gender, and that's what one of the things that. But this is very similar to what you, um, my friend Peggy and I, Peggy Lee Jones and I, we started putting together this. This we put together this nonprofit, and we did like kind of like what you are doing similarly now is we wanted to do outreach and do this. And we actually held two conferences in California. Our second one was huge. We had Dr. Bowers. We had Janet Mock there. We had Isis King there. We had Toby Meltzer there. We had Satterwhite there. We had all of these people come in and it was a three-day conference. And that's oh, wow. kind of what we were going to. When we went to this and we got together with a local university for healthcare, for the transgender community. But then my speaking took off. And so that's where we ended up focusing all of that into my speaking and that type of education. So please, when it comes to you, as you're moving along, you may find, you know what, there's a need here. Yeah. There's a need in this community and you may need to tailor it to that. But please, all I'm saying is keep an open mind, you know, never. and I know, you know, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Never but, say never. Yeah. And that's what it is because we had the same idea, the same goal. Um, what happened with me is what, what got me kind of into that was um, when I transitioned, it's kind of, I hope I'm not going to offend anybody here, but when I transitioned, um, Dr. Bowers originally had my surgery in 2010 and Dr. Bowers um, said, uh, she taught me how to dilate and did the whole nine yards. You've been there. And they said, you cannot have sex for six weeks, right? She said, you cannot have sex for six weeks. And I said, Okay, look at me. Well, I ended up having sex six in a week, six weeks and a day later. Right? I met a guy. Yeah. He ended up giving me HPV. Okay. I went to two different gynecologists. They didn't even put me in a spreader and didn't do a proper test on me, didn't do a simple pap smear to check me out. I ended up having to have a follow-up surgery. And Dr. Bowers can then became my surgeon, my my gynecologist. And what it was was just the simple, basic thing about a pap smear, how to test for HPV. Two gynecologists didn't give me a correct test. So that's what started me originally in pushing towards a little bit of medical awareness in the local uh, community. Yeah. Does that make sense? You know, yeah. but then, and like I said, we, we held these two conferences. We did a lot of work with the local medical. I did a lot of radio programs, but then my, my, my talking with the universities and the colleges that took off and it just, you know, so I pushed that other stuff aside. So that's kind of where, you know, um, and I hope I didn't offend anybody with that. Oh, I'm sure not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's yeah. the one thing that I, I, I think that everybody who is transgender has got to be a little bit more, you know, not so thin skinned, you know, yeah. get over it. You know, yeah. somebody misgenders you get over yeah. it. You know, yeah, look at you the wrong way. Get over it. I did. There was somebody on Facebook a few years ago. And when it comes to misgendering, um, and this is where this is kind of who I am in a little bit. So she put on Facebook, she was in, she's in the middle of the country somewhere. And she went into a Home Depot. She goes, I just started my transition. Her and I were transgender, we're friends on Facebook. And she started her transition and she walked into a Home Depot. And the guy laughed at her and says, What is that? Your Halloween costume? Okay. And um, and she left. And she goes and she pulled over to the side. And this is what she typed on Facebook was, I'm so pissed. I'm going to go home and I'm going to get him fired. And everybody's, yes, yes, get him fired. Get him fired. And I said, no, you know what you're going to do? You're going to sit there and cry for two, five, ten minutes, whatever it takes. You're going to turn your car around. You're going to go back to Home Depot. You're going to pull him aside. 
Because what you're going to do is you're going to say, this is who I am. This is who I am. Explain it to him. This is what makes me try to spend 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes educating him. Because what you're going to do is you're going to drive home. You're going to call his boss. You're going to say, your, your, your employee, Billy, Bob, Mike, whatever his name is, just ridiculing me. I'm never shopping at your store again. All my friends are not shopping at your store. So Billy, Bob's boss is going to come in and say, you know, you did this to this transgender woman. You're fired. And then Billy's going to go home and he's going to tell his girlfriend. He's going to tell his kids, his mom, his friends, family. So now we have 20 people that are against hating him. transgenders rather than trying to be advocates. Yes. Yeah, so let's use these opportunities. We all get misgendered. It hurts. It's a knife in the back. It's a knife in the belly. But let's take this opportunity to use to educate somebody. This, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and again, yeah. sometimes it's more difficult. Sometimes you have to sit and cry for a little while, but take these opportunities to make a change. Because like I said, then chances are maybe that guy does go home and later 10 years from now, that guy's child comes out as transgender. That child's life is now saved rather than saying, you know, going to go yeah. take himself to put a gun yeah. in his mouth or something like that. So that's my philosophy for the day. Yeah. I'm a philosopher today. Okay. <laughs> All right. And Jessica Lynn, we're, we're going to ask you the same question that we ask all of all of our guests. Um, how can people in the community just be better advocates or better friends to the transgender community? How can they be more supportive? Um, boy, I don't know where to start from there. Um, send me money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, that's if you remember what I said is everybody has a different journey. Everybody has a different way of when I started my transition in California, there were people in the local community that told me I can't dress like this. I can't act like this. I can't do this. Everybody has a different path. Never, never criticize somebody. There's no right way to wrong way to transition. Be there on the phone call. Low, make, make it local. You know what we go through. There's people, my brother I haven't spoken to, my child was taken away. There's people like us, we need to cry at one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning rather than cry, talk to somebody, than rather jumping in front of a bridge, jumping in front of a train. This is what it is. If you need there to be somebody, be there for them. It may be a phone call, it may be an email, maybe going to having a cup of coffee with somebody. This is one of the greatest ways. If somebody wants to go shopping, put a group together. Be supportive of that person, that community, that whatever. But be there for the rest of the community. And just remember that everybody has a different path and a different journey. That I cannot, I cannot stress enough. Um, there's no right way to transition and no wrong way. There's just one way, you know, and that's that person's way. So I hope that didn't go on too long. Yeah. No, that was great. <laughs> that was good. Good. Jessica, so I'm going yeah. to ask that last question you have on your list, Shirley, because I because this one this one came from me anyway. So, so Jessica, you have a signature way that you wear your hair, which is basically <laughs> covering your face. And I'm curious where that came from. Is is there a story behind that? Why do you wear your hair that way? I'm, I'm no, dying to know. <laughs> Part <laughs> when I transition, I, I use this a lot, and it comes back to the term gender expression, right? I'm 57 years old. I grew up in the heavy metal days of the Iron Maiden, the Motley Crue. So when me, femininity was the five-inch stiletto heels, the fishnet ties, the short mini skirts, the big hair, the big earrings. So when I transitioned, bigger hair, longer females, gold, that was more femininity. But one of the things is I always had a massive head of hair as a young child. So when I'm transitioned, I would have the biggest, biggest hair in the world. So when I transitioned, I never got my hair cut. And I just said, no, ever, ever cut it. So anytime I go get my hair done, I get my roots done, never, never touch my hair. And it grows in my face sometimes. And then people started saying, uncover your face so now the other day i did a i did a post and it's just like this i'm cousin it <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's, yes. it's just become like a fun thing you know but i like the style of it sweeping across you know um across my hair like this um but um you only see one of my eyes 
but I don't know what the thing is, is, but to me, that was one of my things is when I transitioned, hair was important to me. It was extremely, extremely important to me. So I'm lucky that I do have a full head of hair. You know, I have friends that have hair had hair transplants. So I'm just very, very lucky that way. But um, so to me, femininity was having a head full of long, long hair. And I enjoy having long I'm, hair. I'm with you 110% there. Unfortunately for me, I'm bald on top. So Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is a, a cap glued on my head, but it works. Yeah. It works well. It's your yeah, hair. And so. so, and that was the thing. And it was just, it's just part of that psyche, I think, is yeah. and you remember when you transitioned, the more gaudy you are, the longer females, the bigger earrings, the more you blend it in. You, you know what I mean? That was yeah, hard. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so I think part of it also was, you know, something I missed out on as a younger person. You know, I didn't get yeah. to be a teenage girl. You yeah, know? yeah, so. yeah. And that was part of my problem is that when I had my new body parts, I'm going to use them. I'm going to go try them out. I'm going to experiment. I went through, you know, we, I, Everybody has a different, a different, different period there. But you know, I agree with you. We were never go allowed to go to the prom dressed as Jessica. Nope. Nope. You know, so now we can do it. So you know, I used to go to lumber yards in five inch heels, and <laughs> you know, and um, because I I still continued building even after my transition. You know, there you go. And um, you know, hey, I was good at it. Why not, right? So. <laughs> this is All right. great. So in closing, Jessica Riley, any anything else that you would like to comment wow. on? Um, I'm, I'm just very glad that Jessica Lynn and her busy schedule took the time to yeah. come join us. Thank you, dear. Um, this has been really good. Um, I, I think that everything she said is just spot on. You know, mm -hmm. if you're if you want to be an advocate, you know, if you don't understand, you need to ask questions, you know, yeah. yeah you're never going to learn it on your own unless you're going to do some homework. But I mean, you know, if you know somebody's transgender and you're not comfortable, well, go ask them some questions, figure out why you're uncomfortable. You know, mm -hmm. uh, both sides of, of this equation need to work with the other side so that we all can live together. We're, as she said earlier, we're all human. You yeah, know, right. why can't we just get along? There's no reason why we can't. So. But when it comes to the questions, be respectful. Amen. Yes. You know what I'm saying? When it comes yes. to it, and it's not a class, it's not a class across a classroom saying, are you a boy or a girl? Mm -hmm. If you're a professor, if you're a teacher and you don't know how somebody identifies, there's nothing wrong asking, but mm -hmm. nicely coming up and saying, hi, my name's Jessica. I use she, her pronouns. What are your pronouns? Okay. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Just asking politely. Mm -hmm. Politeness goes a long, long way. Yeah. Yep. And respecting somebody's pronouns. If they say I, you, she, her, they, them, he, his, respect those. Mm -hmm. There you go. And in, you know, so there you go. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We, we really appreciate the time that you've taken of, you know, fitting us into your busy schedule and, and being such an advocate for the transgender community. And this will go a long way on our channel as well as yours. And, and we look forward to uh, talking to you again soon. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for having me. And it was wonderful talking with you guys today. All and right. I really, really appreciate it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Okay. Now that stylish hair is in front of my face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So this is Charlene um, signing off for um, my transgender nation. Thank you, Jessica Riley. Thank you, Jessica Lynn. Um, it was a great interview. And um, if you, you know, need information, if you want to reach out, go to mytransgendernation.com. You can um, ask questions. You can get in touch with someone. And again, don't go through this alone. We're here to help and we're here to support you. Thank you again. Bye, everybody. See you soon. Bye.